Hi you guys, welcome back to the channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. So I'm diving into the Chiron readings. This is going to be for the sign of Aries. So Aries, if you are Chiron in Aries, this reading is for you. Um, Chiron, it's not a planet, it is an asteroid and it orbits between the planets Uranus and Saturn. So what is Saturn? It's the grandfather of this, uh, the cosmos. He rules karma, all about rules and structure. And Saturn is uh, masculine energy. He restricts. Uranus is kind of like the weird quirky uncle to Saturn um, or brother to Saturn, really. They're both large planets. Uranus likes to um, shock people. It's about sudden change. He likes to do things in a very unconventional way. He rules the future. He rules progressive movements. Um, he rules Aquarius and Aquarius rules the 11th house. Saturn rules Capricorn. Capricorn rules the 10th house. So they're side by side. Chiron is currently sitting in the sign of Aries. So it's in your home placement. Um, so wherever Aries is in your chart, um, just look and see where that is um, because it will affect that area of your life. Okay, Aries. So I am a fellow Chiron and Aries. Um, oh, sorry. No, I'm not. No, I'm North Node in Aries. My bad. My Chiron is in Gemini. But anyway, um, I'm going to start off your reading with a few astrology cards to get the energies. And we'll see what's going on. What else is going on with the tarot? Which, you know, Source really wants you to know with your Chiron placement. Chiron is the wounded healer, okay? And, it, you know, it's it shows up in our lives typically in the subconscious mind it's wounds from past lives and it could even be from early childhood and this human experience so that wound is typically how we can help others heal but we somehow don't know how to help ourselves heal in that area so let's see what we have mars your ruling planet your physical energy drive strength and fighting spirit that's what mars rules and mars rules over the first house or I'm sorry, it rules Aries. Aries rules over the first house. And we have the sun. Beautiful. Your immortal spirit, purpose, and destiny is involved. This is beautiful. So some of you could have your Chiron conjunct your Mars or your Chiron conjunct your sun. Your Chiron could be in the first house or maybe even the fifth house. That is home since the fifth house is home to, um, or the, sorry, the sun is home to the fifth house along with Leo. See what else we have here. Oh, Sagittarius. The energy imbues power, superior confidence and enthusiasm with faith, good fortune, and authority. So Sagittarius is, um, it rules over the ninth house and Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. Okay. So you could have your Chiron in your ninth house. Your Chiron could be conjunct Jupiter or, um, your Chiron could actually be, um, in a fire sign because I'm getting like Mar Mars and Sag are our fire elements. And then the sun obviously is a fire element too. So you could just um, have your, um, did I say fire sign? Obviously your Chiron is an Aries. I'm sorry. Your Chiron could be an Aries in a fire house, which would be like the first house, the fifth house, or the ninth house. Those are the fire houses. Okay. So, and this is a general reading, so it may or may not resonate. Just to take what applies and leave the rest. So off the top, you guys, with the energies that I have here with this Mars, Sun, and Sag is that you are definitely about to um, take huge action or you are trying to take huge action some in some area of your life. Again, you're going to have to look at where your placements are to see what's going on there and any other type of transits. But with this, this is all fire on the board so far. So I'm getting action. I'm getting passion. Um, I'm getting like, you know, it definitely could be travel for some of you or traveling for a job or relocating, things like that, or just getting out of one situation and going into another at a relatively swift pace. Let's go to the tarot. I'm using the Light Sears tarot deck to see what's coming up for you all. Um, this is like really exciting. I'm getting really excited energy with this, with this Chiron and... Um, Aries. Now, if your Chiron is an Aries, you're wounded in the area of taking action. You're wounded in the area of being um, very um, pioneering, being very bold, since that is typically fire energy. Fire is like, you know, fire is definitely unafraid to take leaps, to take action towards what it wants. And so that Chiron is that subconscious wound, but I'm getting that 
some of you could be like over that. Some of you could have like healed that or like, you know, you are in a position now where it's like your daily action is like helping you transmute that Chiron placement, that, that inner wound. Nine of swords. So definitely, um, sorry, I got a phone call. Nine of swords, insomnia. Being up at night, kind of playing over things that haven't gone well, things that, you know, mistakes. And it's coming up with the Mars card. So this could definitely be like an action that you took before, some type of pursuit where you, you know, really like ballsy, like, you know, really bold movement that didn't end well. And it's like kind of lingering. And it could be like making you hesitate a little bit to take action. But I'm getting that most of you are. There's still kind of something lurking in the back yeah there's two of pentacles something like a like a choice that was made or a choice that you're gonna have to make and you're like a little nervous about it just not really sure pentacles energy also is like self-worth like value so maybe not feeling confident in some area or feeling like you are worthy or you know enough um what else yeah like you're worthy or you know enough like you haven't like you don't have enough credentials or something like that. Or like you don't look good enough. Knight of Pentacles. Slowest moving knight of the deck. He crosses his T's, dot, dots his eyes. So with this movement, maybe some of you are trying to choose between like what pace to go at, right? Like how quickly you want to like literally go towards something or if you like just want to take your time. So this could be a little bit of like balance, balancing your energies or having trouble doing that. Um, let's see what's going on with this sun card because the sun is like you know the tarot that's the happiest card of the deck so i'm getting like whatever this is like it's going to be definitely successful or it has already been successful and maybe now you're just trying to figure out how to move forward yeah look knight of wands more fire energy fast moving knight okay it's about you know inspired action creativity like a burst of optimism so you know this back here this mars energy this is like probably past stuff for, for you guys I'm getting that that might be behind you yeah, it's behind you because look, Six of Cups. This is like the nostalgia card. Um, it's a six though, which is about balance, mutual reciprocity, support, being kind of halfway towards something. Um, but you know, you may be thinking back. Maybe, maybe there are like relationships that you had to leave behind with this uh, Mars energy. You know, go towards. You know, Mars is like very pioneering. Very um, Mars can be kind of impulsive too. So maybe that is like what the Nine of Swords was about. Maybe you did something like. Yeah, maybe you did something that caused a tower moment. This is the card that flipped out. And you could be feeling a little bit guilty about that. But look, it's coming out with the sun. So it's definitely healing, right? You're definitely like getting over it. Even if you aren't like intentionally sitting down to heal it, I'm getting that like the action you're taking is transmuting that. And Mercury is currently in retrograde in the sign of Aquarius. We have a huge stellium in Aquarius energy. So honestly, you know, the, you know, the Venus, Mars is not in Aquarius, so Mars is in Taurus. So, but Taurus is um, ruled by Venus, <laughs> which is in Aquarius. So it's like, I'm getting that there just could be like some challenges around balancing. I'm just getting like some of you could just be feeling like a little off kilter. Yeah, the Five of Pentacles feeling left out in the cold, feeling like you haven't really achieved what it is you want. You know, hollow victories and rewards. Coming out with Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius is the um, sign of expansion and luck. He's the philosopher, the traveler. So maybe feeling like you haven't made good on the adventures that you've had in the past, but you're really re ready to go again, like give it another go. That could be the retrograde energy. This Hierophant has showed up in this third position for the third time. I did for Aquarius, for Pisces, and here it is for you, Aries. So Hierophant, card of Taurus. Um, some of you could be... Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, or um, or you could be a Sagittarius. Um, really getting to a point where you are firm in your values and your beliefs, your traditions, things that are going to anchor you in who you are and your identity, and that's really could what bring up what could bring about the expansion and the um, the higher learning, you know, within oneself. So Sagittarius is a very spiritual sign. Um, the Hierophant is like the spiritual leader. He's like the high priest, right? He's the, the male version of the high priestess. Definitely very much connected to religion. It also can symbolize marriage. Um, so maybe this is like, but marriage doesn't have to be like romantic, right? Marriage, maybe like 
marrying yourself to your career, marrying yourself to your passion, marrying yourself to the um, to the, uh, the the idea that you will always be, you know, an adventurer and you won't take life too seriously. You know, maybe that's what you were doing before because you started out with the Nine of Swords energy and the Two of Pentacles. Maybe you were just juggling too much. Maybe you just, you know, need to be more flexible. Um, yeah, Four of Cups is here now. Okay, so not being able to see what the gifts that the universe is giving you. Um, not being appreciative of that. I'm going to get a few more for you guys, actually. I'm going to get three more cards for Aries. Yeah, Justice card. Card of Libra. Venus rule, bringing about balance. Didn't I say that? Yeah, you guys are like feeling off kilter, not well balanced. And there you are with the justice card. Balancing out, you know, integrity, truth, you know, honesty, clarity. And this clarity for what you want as well. The star card. Oh, beautiful. Two major arcanas back to back. This is the major arcana for Aquarius. And we currently have all that beautiful uh, stellium energy in Aquarius. Um, the sun is currently in Aquarius. Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, all in Aquarius. So look and see where Aquarius is in your chart. Um, and that could be definitely like kind of like a blanket energy for what's going on with your Chiron and Aries. Um, what else do we have? Oh, 10 of Pentacles, beautiful. So yeah, you guys are definitely headed towards um, total bliss, happiness, success, fulfillment, you know, with that sun card there. I knew it was definitely something really, really great on the horizon, but I was just getting a little bit of like, tug like tugging from something from your past um but you know you're healing it you're transmuting it you're working on getting the balance um the star card is all about being hopeful for the future it also represents healing from any type of trauma and you know with it coming out right here with that sun card the sun card is um you know, not only is it the happiest card of the deck the sun literally is like a healing element all the main things need the sun to live so you know, it's illuminating maybe things that have been in your shadow space, you know, bringing about more clarity so you can get balance and get to your 10 of pentacles. You know, 10s and tarot also about um, completions. So completing, wrapping up a cycle. Beautiful energy, Aries. I'm going to get one card from the Keepers of the Light. Open communication, Mercury. <laughs> Here he is, Mercury's in retrograde. Get a weight off your chest. Speak up with love and be heard. Absolutely. So maybe, you know, some of the tug of war could be you needing to, you know, address something that happened in the past. Mercury is in retrograde and that usually brings up things from the past. Things that need to be communicated, resolved, rethought, revised, things like that. Spider. Trust the creative spark you're feeling and express it through writing stories that inspire and enlighten. That's your spirit animal for this reading. The spider. And now we're going to get one angel answer. Improving health. Interesting. Improving health. So health could be many different things though, right? Mind, body, and spirit. That's what I have for you, Aries. I love you guys so much. Um, my website pretty much has everything that I was putting in all those links before. So you can check out my website. Um, personal readings can be found there. And that's a little bit more about myself as well. Um, for those of you who are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. I love you guys. I appreciate all of your energy, your views, comments, likes, shares. Um, if this video resonates, go ahead and like this one. Subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next reading. Love you so much. Be sure to thrive. Bye.